Why, hello, everybody, and welcome back to the Anime Club. Great lore for <laughs> Or Realm not. Shifter. Uh... And nobody else, because someone decided to interrupt me. <laughs> I, I've run out of taglines to say. I am a rebel. This week we watched Get Backers, episode 1 through 14. Yes. yes. I like this show quite a bit. Good. How about we make a sandwich here? We'll start with Seki, who will have the most predictable opinions. <laughs> okay. All right. So this show was actually really thought provoking for me. Um, and I really liked um, one of the main concepts in it. I've expressed it to uh, Nick Knack before. But I genuinely enjoy one of the main concepts in it for the variety and kind of wild card that it provides. And I like how they build the story around that element. I know that this is the spoiler free part, so I'm not going to name the element because it's pretty telling. But, you know, that's honestly my thoughts. I mean, I love the show. Yeah. All right, then I guess we're going to make a sandwich here. So, uh, Vorn, why don't you go next? Uh, let's see. Hmm. Without spoilers, this is all the context you're getting, but, uh, no, and possibly going to end up convoluted. All right, then. All right, I'll go next. I found the show pretty middling, if I'm honest. I I didn't get attached to any of the characters outside of one who quickly overstayed her welcome. More on that later. And... The care, like the the issue of the week kind of format didn't do it for me early on, and then it rushed into an overarching format, like a third of the way through, and it it felt real jarring. I don't know. I didn't particularly like it as much as I'd hoped. Oh yeah, I think segment messed up on the episodes for this one. No, the arc no. doesn't end till the end of the season. Yeah, the arc goes all the way to the end of like episode yeah. twenty-five or something. And I, I dis, I deliberately wanted to introduce that arc that goes down to the end of the season because I was going to have to break it up no matter what. Yeah. Wait, no, it would have been ten, then like fifteen. Wouldn't that work? Yeah, no, because the this show is uh, it didn't. So one thing about this show is it only has forty eight episodes because it never um, it never actually finished as an anime. It caught up with the manga and then it wasn't relicensed. Um, and I want to I wanted to get it out in as few as possible submissions I see. because it's not very long. All right, so next we should go to Realm Shifter. Yeah, so I actually did, like I said earlier, I quite enjoyed this series, actually. I liked a lot of the overarching elements and themes. I enjoyed quite a few of the characters. And uh, it reminded me a lot of Cowboy Bebop, honestly. And I'm also quite a big fan of, like, dystopian settings like this one is. So I quite thoroughly enjoyed this series. (laughs) All right, so... Now, I guess moving on into uh, was it everybody's favorite segment. Yeah, no, no. First, the animation, <laughs> the art, the music, and the OPNED. Sorry, I'm mixing up my form. So, I mean, I mean I we could go into that. that no, we could. No, I don't, I don't know if I'm the only one, but I actually really like the OP. I like a lot. The OP. Like a lot. Uh, it was like okay. I didn't find it particularly like amazing, but it was okay. It reminded me a lot of Code Geass OP two, which so which is like that same kind of like ah, voice going. I hate the loud, high pitched, slightly off tune voice. I really liked it. I thought it was really catchy, and I genuinely enjoyed it. Watched it every time. I don't really have anything good to say about the ending because I didn't really listen to the ending a whole lot. There were actually two endings for the audit episodes. I noticed. I didn't watch. Yeah. Either of them. <laughs> yeah. I did I didn't watch. watch any. I did watch them. I just didn't pay attention to them. I didn't watch any of the endings, mainly to save time, since I was binging this and the night before, supposedly. Also, um, funny funny mention here is that, you know, normally Knick Knack shames people for watching the dub, 
But uh, I would shame people for watching the dub in this case because the dub is legitimately pretty oh, bad. God, I watched the first episode of the dub. I think Realm watched even more in the dub. I, I, no, I watched the. I only watched the first episode of the dub. Thankfully, because note here, on, the dub is the only officially licensed available. And I, when I first watched this show years and years ago, I watched the dub. Um, and so I actually had never seen the sub till we pulled it out this time. And I watched the sub this time and then the dub again. And yeah. <laughs> the dub is laughably bad. It's so bad. It's, so, it's not, it's almost as bad as the Prince of Tennis dub. So <laughs> while we're not condoning the, you know, the thing that the act that shall not be named yeah. Please do yourself a favor if you watch the show and watch the sub. Yeah. Oh, I'm fine. condoning it. There's no officially printed <laughs> way of buying it that'll directly fund the studio. And it's not streaming anywhere. Yeah, and it's pretty old. It's I think I looked it up. It was 2002. Yeah. So yeah. I, it's been I a while. zero moral like, problems with pirating this one. Because believe me, if, uh, if there was a way to get physical copies, I would have gotten them because I like it so much and it's not a long series. As it is, I've had to fight tooth and nail to get a bunch of the manga because it's so uncommon in the U.S. Well, supposedly you can stream it, but I think that's defunct now. So well, No, you can yeah. stream it, but you're only streaming yeah. the dub. Yeah, yeah. Uh, at, least, at least through legal means anyway. For, uh, it, it is available on both Prime Video and, is it Verve? Verve well, Verve Crunchyroll. Yeah. yeah, so Crunchyroll. Well, actually, no, not, not Crunchyroll, Verve High Dive. Okay, so Verve and Verve and Prime, like I said originally. Well, High uh, Dive is the specific streaming service. But yeah. anyways, that but you're only getting the dub if you're watching that. So if you want the sub, then you're going to have to go to pirating sites. I mean, I will say I did fall in love with it having watched only the dub, but the sub does make it better in retro. Yes. Um. <laughs> If you happen to be very young, which you shouldn't be watching this video, comma, uh, then <laughs> uh, then you probably won't find a problem with it because when you're young, you find problems with no dubs. Yeah. Um, because you haven't you, experienced the other stuff. But as you get older, you find more problems with the dubs you grew up with. Yeah. I will also make a comment that so our last episode was about Haikyuu and I mentioned that Haikyuu did not have a stylized intro. Uh, this has a very stylized intro. Yeah, it has a decent um, stylized intro. It's, yeah, and it's done bit. in contrast and the whole show is kind of the color scheme is um, like transition scenes and the intro and outro are like skewed in like red, blue, black... Yeah, mo it's mostly the backgrounds that are like that. Because like yeah. the characters tend to say the same. Like there's there's nothing there's no like noragami effect on most of the characters. And like yeah. like like the rest of this, their body is like say gray, and then only their eyes stand out. It's just like the backgrounds are typically like a darker color. Like yeah, if I can cut, I really didn't like that darker color backgrounds. Not gonna lie, and this is something I actually hate about Fate too, done by the same studio, the original Fate. They both have the same kind of like dimmed backgrounds, and they just look. I don't like them. At all. I don't yeah. mind the dimmed backgrounds because I see them as like the background is the kind of dystopian setting, and the characters are not dimmed, which to me like shows them standing out in the dystopian setting. But yeah. that contrasts so badly to the eyes; it just does not look pleasing at all. Well, also, I, it I might... don't have a problem with it. Yeah, it might also be because of the technology of the time that's actually caused that it is black. also 2002 yeah, yeah it is I mean, quite, it is quite like aged like it looks like something from the 80s yeah it does it, it and oh that's another thing the art style is um vaguely reminiscent of almost like gundam and saint Seiya, like the old gundam and saint Seiya. Mm -hmm. yeah kind um, of yeah, and it, it shows up in the manga. Like it's really obvious in the manga. Yeah, uh, like I could like I'm looking at the manga right now because I was look I wanted to see like when the manga actually came out. It was it came out it released in 1999. Yeah. Uh, so for a show that released in the in the uh, in the 2000s, this, this show can drink. It's that yeah. old. Yeah. <laughs> it's time to have its uh, bachelorette party or bachelor party. <laughs> Who knows? 
Yeah. Well, it's not getting married. <laughs> it might. Who knows? It's That's at true. That it's age. old enough to get married now. <laughs> uh, I mean, it fin- it finished before it could do any of those. It finished in 2007. Mm-hmm. But well, the I mean, show is not. The, it's the manga that's old enough to drink, not the show. Right. Oh, yeah, yeah the sorry. show is 2002, yeah. so it just yeah. turned 18. It's old enough to smoke and join the military, but not to drink. We and crash a car anime. into a house. Yes. We here at the anime club do not condone underage drinking. No, we do not. That is not okay. Yeah. No, no. No, no. Drink walk. <laughs> oh, uh, uh, anyways, um, I mean, I okay. So, I w- another. Th- I mean, I, I guess another thing that's almost like the same comment, but you know, it does have unique animation. Like the style in which it's done is unique to Get Backers. Yeah, but I yeah. think that's a product of its time. Is that it was made during a time when animes were a little bit more individualistic, a lot yeah. of the time. Like, um, because they didn't look, pump as many out per year. Right. They were made to look more directly like the manga. Yeah. So, and, the, and I can see this by looking at some of the images of the manga. But, yeah. And I don't, I don't think that's a bad thing. No, I don't think it is either. Although it, de- it definitely strikes at you as a very, it definitely strikes as a very old show so yes it's dated but we can't necessarily hold it's it's like the show it's like dated in the same way that like the first arc of jojo is dated <laughs> I would, yeah. the first arc of jojo is quite a made quite a bit later i actually think that's at when in the way it's dated there that's more the story in terms of how the storytelling goes i actually do see a lot of similarities in the storytelling of how jojo's first arc and the this went yeah I think more it's like the first couple episodes of Gintama more likely. Oof. Oh my god, it is kind of like the first couple episodes of Gintama. Yeah. Got a similar feel. Not, yeah. not, not in terms of like not in terms of like how serious the show takes itself. God, this serious this show takes itself more seriously than Gintama. Oh yeah. Far, but like, it's, far more seriously. It's vaguely resembling Gintama. Yeah. Yeah, in terms of art style here. Uh, not not really art style. Do you have oh, to say the something I will commend the show on is I actually do like some of the insert music they use. Like the like whenever they're winning their fight, suddenly they have like their song. You know the theme song. Of, yeah. The day. Yeah, that yeah. starts playing. I do. I did actually kind of like that theme. Like I actually tap my foot every time it come on. Didn't actually notice any of that happen. Like the theme song coming on, but it was probably more so an afterthought. Well, it's not the the OP. It's like there's a specific. Uh... No, I know what you're saying. I just didn't yeah. notice it, like when it when it happened. So I did, I did like the insert music a little bit, though. Not the best, but it was also it it, it was far from it, it wasn't non-existent, and it was pretty. It was decent. All right, so are we done with the opening segment now? Yeah, yeah I, think I think so. Yeah, I think we can move on to themes yeah. and storyline. Yeah. I'll let someone else go first. Second. So, it, there's, there's an obvious line of dystopianism running through it with the infinite fortress in the background. Yeah. And that is like the origin point of so many of the main characters and that kind of thing. Um, and I really like the whole idea of the infinite fortress. And I think that lends itself when you're looking at certain characters like Genji is that that is the, the idea of Genji and Bon is that Genji's had a rebirth since his time in the infinite fortress. Like he's a different person. And that's really, they try to emphasize that really strongly by showing him like in contrasting scenes to like how he was when he was in the infinite fortress because he grew up there. That's where he came from. But he left and reinvented himself. Right. I think it's... And... Okay. I I was just going to say, I think that's, like, part of another, like, theme of the... uh, Small, like, it's probably one of the more, like, minor themes, but it's still a theme that I noticed is the ability to, like, just move on and look towards the future to, like, change yourself and better yourself. That was, like, a theme I noticed, like, in this show. Like, yeah. as, as Gen, like, especially with Genji and even to some extent Bon, although we didn't learn as much about him, you can no, not him. yet. Yeah, but you can see, but you can see like some of the things that like he wants to change, like 
especially when we get into some of like the later episodes with one of his old uh, comrades and stuff like that. And it's it's interesting that for Genji, moving away from the Limitless Fortress is a rebirth, but for at least three or four different characters who we meet, uh, Kazuki, Shido, and Makubex, even though we didn't see him a whole lot, moving into the Limitless Fortress was a rebirth for them. Yeah. So in a way, I find that the Limitless Fortress is kind of a place, of, it's a beginning and an end yeah. in a lot of ways. It was the beginning of Genji's story, uh, but it was the end of like whoever, you know, Shido was before he was the beast master and that kind of thing. So there's a very strong undercurrent of people being able to change right. and reinvent themselves quite easily. And I think that is obviously lent by the whole dystopian like obviously the people in the limitless fortress are not really like they're not kept as well like kept track of as well like the characters who live outside of it right um it's obviously like its own little world and a law system and there's like no obvious like the police don't go in there that kind of thing right it's it's its own isolated environment yeah um, I'll say, I mean, there's, there's also an element of like broken bonds right. because you see Bon and Himiko, for example, and then you see Genji and his, uh, four Kings and that kind of thing. Yeah. Um, so there's definitely also an element of, uh, breaking and reforging of bonds. Yeah. All throughout the show. Um, which is pretty important. I mean, a lot of these characters that have broken bonds become, you know, really important. Mm-hmm. Like, even some of, like, the more minor characters that I didn't think would personally make a reappearance, but I was happy they made a, made a reappearance. <clears throat> Jackal. <laughs> I love Jackal. <laughs> um, uh, we'll say the the first, like, cut bunch of episodes before you get into the Limitless Fortress and Makubek's arc, the, the ill arc, uh, oh dear oof anyways the first set of episodes is very monster of the week kind of little short little things that are kind of half comedic yes uh, and no like i did actually like they like they did give like sort of that like sort of vibe to me but i felt that the message was the more important takeaway from each of those episodes yeah and less yeah. so about who they were fighting yeah it was almost like a book of like aesop's fables or something you know like it doesn't really matter what the story is but there's a lesson at the end that they want to communicate right through this story that they like showed the, like you. the like the mo like the most like prime example of it was the story with the clay man yeah where, oh where yeah there, where there's like a lot of like heavy symbolism and stuff like that mm -hmm. so yeah and this is also kind of like the reason why i got into anime as well because like the older shows of our generation that we watched as cartoons had like these kind of messages within them yeah. which made really nice stories yeah. Um, I mean, the Clayman arc is certainly a really good example. I think another one, one that always um, I saw was the father and the, the, the poor father and the daughter who married into the Yakuza. But, you know, I guess she really liked the wealth more than she liked, you know, her family. She blamed yeah. her family for a lot of things. Yeah. But for her, you know, money was worth more than love. Yeah. And for him, love was worth more than money. Yeah. Um, so I, oh, I just want to comment before we move on. Uh, I love that scene with the, the violin girl. Uh, Hana, Hana, uh, is her, what's her name or whatever? Uh, no, her name is uh, Monica. Monica. Yeah. <laughs> it's just like, there's the giant dude. Like, oh, there's his weak point. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, yeah. He just nails him in the nuts. And I he, adore it. He just falls uh, over. And I, I just like, I, I had to pause and laugh. It laughed my ass off for a minute at that moment. I, yeah. <laughs> and you need to realize she's been blind for the whole entire of her life and she knows that exact location pretty goddamn well. I mean, Loki, every single time that like Jackal makes some sort of like homoerotic comment or motion towards Genji and Genji goes all like, <laughs> yeah. I was like dying. 
Also, I do, I do like one little animation quirk that they did, which was the Chibi, Chibi, Genji, and Bon. Oh, yeah. I remember those. Like, sometimes, like, Gen- more more often, Genji just goes, like, Chibi-fied occasionally. Yeah. Like when, like when Bon like maybe pinches his ear or something, or like he's like, yeah, or he's like pouting over something. Yeah, Nick, Nick, you've been pretty silent. Um, I've been letting you guys have your fun for a bit because when I start, I'm not going to make any friends, and I'm going to be taking away all the good grace I earned during the IQ episode from you. Oh boy, oh boy, maybe, maybe we just uh, mute Nick, Nick, and move on from here. Uh, no, 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 no. No, no, no. Uh, Nick Nick needs to say his piece, even if Well, I suppose it's time for your piece now. Yeah, yes. Nick Nick, go on ahead. I'm glad you guys saw the themes. I really am. Cause I couldn't I didn't have much like else to like think about. Cause as the entire time I'm going through the story, I was just bored. <laughs> the, the the early especially early on with the monster of the week stuff, just all of it like it just went and it went and it went every time. I was like, how are they going to get out of the situation? Jagan. Jagan. It's Jagan. Jagan. Sorry. And characters just largely did not grip me at all. And this, they didn't start to even kind of grip me to the, the limitless fortress. And even then it was sort of too little too late. If I had to say, yeah, I have I just, to agree. It, with you the on show that. lost my interest so early on. Like it would have been a drop if it hadn't been for the hat. That's all I really. I, it just got too boring for you. Is the thing? It's entirely the pacing for me. I think that's fair because I think personally that that first arc um, in relationship to the rest of the anime is pretty unique. I mean, yeah, because the- like I said, the Limitless Fortress arc goes for a long time and relatively a, a lot happens in the few episodes we do see, right? Like we get several major fights, we get some major character building, that kind of thing. Um and I, I feel like the pacing does move a little faster later, but obviously you haven't seen that, and I don't know what your opinion on it will be yet, so I can't say that it's going to be necessarily better for you, but I can say that that first set of episodes is significantly kind of disjointed from the the major arcs that show up later. Because I think I, it is mostly character introduction and that kind yeah, of Yeah, like, that was the other thing that was a bit weird to me, was, now that you mention it, was the first couple of episodes outside of Limitless Fortress, like, the pacing of it was pretty weird, like, how they, like, uh, paced those episodes. Like, I didn't find it as much of a problem for me, because I knew that this was, like, a time for them to set up the characters, to introduce them, get us used to them and accustomed to them and whatnot although the only one i would say i did find a bit jarring and unexpected though not unwelcome was the reintroduction of jackal into the limitless fortress i know so i'll also say and this is not something i've told seki yet there is a part in the middle i want to say yeah it was the violin arc Mm -hmm. where i accidentally skipped an episode because of gogo anime Oh, I didn't notice till I went to go watch the episode the next day, and then I just watched rewatched both episodes. Mm-hmm. Ah. and I just would not have noticed if I hadn't like accidentally like if I hadn't started the next episode the next day. Yeah, I nearly got confused myself until I realized like what was what it was. I nearly skipped episode two, and then I realized, oh wait, this is episode three. I need to go back one. Yeah, mm-hmm. but I didn't notice from the show itself, and that's kind of. I think it's more of a fault of the site, honestly. It doesn't tell you the immediate label. Of what any other show, I would have noticed as soon as the episode started that something was off. I just didn't. I noticed that it was off because... Uh, I mean, maybe if, because this was technically continuing from the same arc that you were watching, so that's probably why you didn't notice. Whereas this one that I watched, it was only like the first... There was only like the first couple of episodes, so it was a little bit more noticeable. And this isn't to say, I'm not blaming the anime that I got around a bit. That's not the anime's fault. It's just, I should not, it shouldn't have been, I shouldn't have not been able to realize it while I was watching the episode that something was like that was off. 
because I've done Actually, that before he- with other sites and other anime. But I always notice as soon as I start up that episode and as soon as I'm in the middle of the episode, I will. Oh, but episode. here's one more praise I want to give to the show. Um, if they did do a recap of what of what events just previously happened, they keep it very short and concise by about 30 seconds after the opening is done. Yes, that is a great relief because there will be shows like Naruto where there's like four minutes of recap wasted. Yeah. I found the recaps obnoxious here, so I'd rather. I mean, I just, no I mean, I still just skip them, but I'm just like appreciative that they at least keep the recaps oh, as uh, much, much shorter than something like Naruto. Yeah, I think Nick Nack, you don't have the experience of watching like a Dragon Ball Z episode that has five minutes of recapped screaming, or like a Naruto episode that recaps the entire fight that happened the previous episode. And I think that kind of makes a very jarring contrast. I don't like the recaps, whether they're long or short. That's fine. You know, I don't like them either. I still just skip them. I'm just, I'm just saying that I appreciate that they're keeping it down a minute so it doesn't cut into the rest of the episode. And I, I think, for example, Nick Nick, let's say you were watching this like one episode a month. The short little recaps are like pretty decent like they're relatively short and they cover what you need to know and consider if you were like watching this as like a seasonal anime fan when it was like just airing like having only 30 seconds of recap screen time is a lot better than watching like five minutes of complete recap yeah i'm not saying that like that like realm or i watched it and like enjoyed it we're just saying that it was beautifully concise in a way that most shows aren't. I just closely that for me, it's like if you're stepping on a thumbtack, you're like, oh, it's not that. It's not as bad as stepping on a nail. But bitch, I still stepped on a thumbtack. <laughs> <Yes. laughs> <laughs> All right, characters. Yes. Waifu was. Waifu was. Waifu was. Waifu All right. Vorn, which nothing did you waifu or did you actually have a waifu? Do, do I have to choose a waifu? I mean, I mean you, preferably. Preferably, but you okay. also decided to go with nothing but in the past. Well, I would have gone nothing, but I have to, so either Monica or Claymore, I guess. Clayman? Clay, uh, Clay, Clay uh, whatever. Clay, yeah, Clayman. Okay. Yeah, Clayman. Claywoman. Huh. Spoilers! <laughs> Not really, though. <laughs> yeah, at this point, who cares? Yeah. That's too old for spoilers. All right. Not that unre- unenthusiastic reaction's over. I'll give my unenthusiastic reaction. My waifu was Vincent Van Gogh. Yeah. Aw, <laughs> that's actually yeah. really sweet because yeah. I like what they did with him. Yeah. Okay. Um, Realm Shifter? I have no less than three waifus, and I put them in the category of would you date, marry, or fuck them? Now, I would put Kazuki in the date category, Genji in the marry category, and Jackal in the fuck category. Okay. So, like, I can respect that. Yeah, so okay. like, I think Kazuki is adorable, and she does adorable, and Bond's adorable, and Gin's adorable. Oh my god, I want. Jekyll so badly. He is my waifu. <laughs> any day, any time. <laughs> so I'm not allowed to have multiple waifus, but Realm is. No, oh, no. The last great. time you said multiple it, waifus, you said every girl in the series. Yeah. Realm <laughs> picked specific people for specific purposes. It was Don't utilitarian. Worry. Don't worry, Vorn. Realms fit you step that past now too. But also, I'm going to give you respect because fate does have some pretty good girls. <laughs> That's a decent one to burn that pass on. Yep. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, no, Jekyll. Jekyll is one of my is my favorite character. Yeah. All right. Any characters anybody had any specific thoughts on? I would. Uh, have to know okay. No, so... spo- no, no, no spoilers, Seki. No spoilers. 
No, uh, I brought this up with Nick Knack earlier, and I think he feels the same way, is Himiko has overstayed her welcome in terms of what they're trying to, what they were doing with her, because yeah. they introduced her as absolutely hating Bond for killing her brother, and there is no actual resolution to that in the anime yeah. at all. They do not make up, they do not hug, they do not kiss it out, there is no explanation given, but all of a sudden, she's willing to work with him again yeah if himiko had that was had, a bit like, weird been handled better when i first saw her i was like oh that'll probably be my waifu and then no she was handled terribly it was the only character that i act like i actively liked when she was first introduced too and then she kept Ugh. coming back and kept like not having any character to her whatsoever i also think uh not to does the, is the manga do useless. anything to like solve that or not really uh it's, it's solved somehow at some point but i think i can't remember if it happens early on or later i'd okay. have to reread it okay. uh also natsumi seems a little useless uh like she, I, I don't yeah. know why they kept her after she was, her arc. she was oh she was the high schooler right who was, yeah. was the very first episode the pilot she, yep. she was just she's just kind of there along for the ride yeah. i don't really i don't really like like she's just like one of those like characters that are just there i just ignore her from a, yeah from a part honestly yeah. but on the flip side um i love jackal's character because his whole character is that you know i don't really give a shit how much you're paying me i want to enjoy i want work. to enjoy what i and you know what? As a person who is part of the universal pyramid scheme that is becoming an Egyptologist, I understand the idea of not really needing money, but just wanting to do what you love. Exactly. Because exactly. <laughs> my entire career is essentially a pyramid scheme mm -hmm. that I will earn zero money out of overall. Yeah. <laughs> I understand. And I, love, right. I love that he's brutal. All right, He's absolutely I, brutal. Shall I light the fire now? Uh, uh, hang I on, think before, I should. Uh, before, nah, you, before you two light the fire. Before you two light the fire. What the fuck is up with Shido and Kazuki, man? Who? The uh, fuck is up with Beastmaster and Threadmaster, man? Uh, yeah. I, like, mean, I need more there. from Tragic Backstory. Oh, you mean like what happened in their past? Like I understand. I like I know all their backstory, right? But like I felt they could have done a better job putting a little bit of more of it into the anime because they do use them more in the manga. Yeah, oh, Threadmaster doesn't even like barely has a part in anything at all, and suddenly, I like, I will say though characters. that in the anime, Threadmaster Kazuki does actually get a really big background piece, but it's later in this arc. Oh great! Yeah, yeah. Like I it's thought, irrelevant like, I, to the episodes we watched. Like I could see like where Kazuki can start to fit into all of this, but it's just going to be kind of like a slower introduction to everything. Like right now, what I am noticing, as like as how from the episodes that we watched, that it's really trying to focus on Genji's backstory for the most yeah. part. Genji the the limitless fortress and the four kings yeah it's trying That's to focus, it's trying to focus on that and then explain and then eventually go into explaining how um uh fuck why can't i remember his name uh the guy Han? who now who, the, no the guy who now runs the limitless fortress oh makubex does not run the limitless fortress oh, okay. now or he's just like the surveillance but, person yeah right? makubex like how like essentially how makubex came into the limitless fortress yeah so yeah. <laughs> so all right, light the fire, you two. Light, light that fire. I want to. I want going. my ass. It looks to like you burn. have something to say. I freaking hate Ban, but only for a certain part, and that's his fucking power of his fucking eyes, because the it Jagan. will turn fucking convoluted. I can feel it in my bones. Oh, so you, uh, so, so you just uh, so you just don't like the fact that you think it's going to become like complicated, like he's going to use it at a time that you didn't think that he used it or something. No, it's going to end up like, oh, you think I used it then? But no, I made it think that you thought this happened, that then I used it. That already hacked. Like, that already did <sighs> do that with the animals, where he yeah. used it to convince someone that. He used it. He used on it to convince two animals. Know, that he used it three person. different ah. times. No, no, no. Even like 
more convolute than that. That's the thing what I'm worried about, and I'm going to hate that if that happens. It confused me. Can he control the dreams that he's giving people, or is it just like they just have so a dream? So he, he sets, he, he catches them in the eye, and it shows them it's like, I think it's either they're like them succeeding or them failing in a really terrible way. It's like a nightmare or a dream. And I think he can decide which it is. Yeah. Uh, but it, it's up to their own mind to fuel it with like either horrors or good things. And that's yeah. how it works. It, it feeds on your own fear or your own, or like, your own desires. Desire. Yeah. To create, because there, there's nothing he could think of necessarily for these people he doesn't know that would scare them more than their own deepest fears. Hmm. Like, okay, so here's a, I've noticed that year two's main complaint about the Jagan is, is it's like a cop out. And I do see some of that, like how it can become a cop out, but it has its own self imposed restrictions. It does, and, and they are strictly imposed. Yeah. And I feel like the thing was, I think the reason you guys just don't like it as much is also because, like, it's a bit, it can get a bit convoluted, so it's harder to, like, understand it, but I understood it enough, so I didn't mind it as much. And once again, I mean, we'll get a lot more of Bond's backstory, and that'll talk a lot more about the Jagon later, but it's irrelevant right now, so it doesn't matter. Yeah. Yeah. Yay. My Start fire is a little bit different than that one. Mm-hmm. I didn't give a crap about anybody throughout the series. You already touched upon why I lost interest in Himiko, but before that, and even until like the last two episodes, none of the characters really like grabbed me at all. And a few of them were just, I found the main characters kind of annoying through most of the series. I didn't really find them so annoying and it was more so because like I knew like essentially like they're more so just like people that had either tragic backstories or something like unfortunate happened to them and they're just now trying to deal with the weight of that and move on with their lives essentially. So Mm -hmm. that was more so something that I didn't really like care about so I was more so okay so this is how they are as people essentially. They're just trying they're how they were, were like I honestly still don't like Genji at all. I mean that's fair. I mean you just didn't like him. You didn't like how they yeah. developed him. I mean they're they're gonna their backstories and I found the backstories compelling enough, but like Genji for example, you're the leader of Volts. How scary and then he gets in almost every single fight. And I'm sure there's character reasons for that, but still it's there are uh, there are a lot of character reasons for it. Like you can like something that I have noticed essentially. Like as like we see this version of Genji compared to what he was like when he was the known as the Emperor of Volts, mm-hmm. um, or the Lightning Emperor. Yeah. Um, he like he like his power was quite a bit different to like how but it is now. We also get a hint as to why that is when Jekyll is watching him in the Limitless Fortress. Yes, uh, Jekyll that's... says it's almost like it's feeding him. Yeah, that's that's something else that I that like I noticed. Like essentially and, that, was, that was the exact point that I was gonna bring up. Yeah, and there's a comment later in that of all the people that they meet in the Limitless Fortress, like of the four kings and everyone else, Genji's the only one who is he was born in the Limitless Fortress. He comes from the Limitless Fortress. Everyone else came to the Limitless Fortress or was left there. But Genji and Makubex are children of the Limitless Fortress. And they're different from everyone else because of it. Yeah. Like, there's just something that's different about them and the way that the Infinite Fortress affects them. Mm-hmm. I think I have one more thought. I think that's better saved for when we get to the tropes. I don't think it, it'd be kind of a waste to go. I to think we should move on tangent. to the tropes right now, though. Let's, yeah, let's yeah. go on to the tropes right now if we want to yeah. keep this like yeah. under the hour. Well, we've already mentioned Monster of the Day for the first yeah. like, couple episodes. Yep. yep. Uh, lesson teaching. Uh, yeah, Jekyll. Like... <laughs> <laughs> Jekyll. Literally just Jekyll. Yeah. <laughs> The, the mass the mass murdering truly genuinely chaotic evil uh the the brooding backstory happy-go-lucky characters yeah 
the mysterious backstory, mysterious character Chan. Every um, character outside of episode one Chan had mysterious <laughs> backstory, secret edge to them, though. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Uh, that, that goes into the trope I was having a problem with, though, was the show wants me to take it seriously at times, but the com- like the comedy feels so out of place in those moments, and when it's not, I j- I'm just not interested in... Uh, I, I, I get exactly what you're saying, and I can see why you think that way, but I took the comedy more so as it's these people know, like, the reality of their situation, and so they're they're trying to lighten the mood around it essentially by bringing in humor. Now, whether or not that humor was executed well is up to you to decide. Yeah, I think in terms of the way you see the humor and the way it hits, that is very individual in terms of watching experience because I enjoy the humor bits of the show and I think they're not in weird places. But once again, I think that's up to the viewer in a lot of ways. I think it's up to, because everyone's going to have a slightly different opinion of like what they think should have been serious or funny moments necessarily. And I mean, I don't find any issues with where there were funny moments. But that's me and that's not you. And I'm not saying that you're, that you're wrong. Like you're right. If, they're, if they don't feel right to you, they don't feel right to you. So, uh, Vorn, did you have anything to say? Uh, I already said it. Oh, the... Okay. Uh... What was it again? God damn it. Monster of the Day. No, it wasn't Monster Day. Lesson was, of the uh, Day. Yeah, oh, Lesson look. Day. There yeah. we go. Oh. So, yeah. uh, we've already said all our tropes. We've already. I mean, said... are, are there any other tropes that show up? I mean, I think I, that a trope probably... that shows up is um, like a slightly overpowered character. Yeah, that's definitely a trope. Like, all these characters honestly seem overpowered in their own respect. Yeah, I think right now, because people like Genji and Bon are of similar power levels, you have to realize, and then obviously Jekyll and the Four Emperors are of similar power levels, but they are so far above normal people at this point that they seem so overpowered. And that evens out when you experience more of the Limitless Fortress, but right now it's ridiculously out of place and overpowered. Yeah. So Yay. power, so, power level, so overpowered power level is another trope. In this yeah. Knickknack? I don't particularly have any other tropes to mention. I mean, there were other tropes, but there's not many that like stood out as particularly noticeable outside of the ones I've pointed out. Mm-hmm. Crap. I'm trying to remember that DD, Dean, not Dean, D, uh, fucking, what was it? Uh, what? How many volts did nipples? Oh, oh. Uh, f- fifty thousand volts to the nipples! Yeah. <laughs> Those are cards against humanity. <laughs> yep. There we I go. Mean, fifty thousand you... volts straight to the nipples. Which can, in the in the in the purpose of this show, can be taken as Ginji sending fifty thousand volts of electricity to your nipples, or him sending fifty members of the volts to your nipple. <laughs> there are two very different no, translations no. of that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Nick Knack is supremely unimpressed with our humor. <laughs> he, just, he, just, he, he is very unimpressed right now. Okay, next section. I think next section is uh, closing thoughts moving in, right? Well, it's the free talk, and then it, the, this is the free yeah. the okay. final. But I feel like we got most of our free talk done already. I mean, I think my only comment about the free talk is, you know, the fact that. The the idea of the Limitless Fortress to me, I think, is just so fascinating. It's my favorite part of this entire manga. Yeah, that was the other thing that, like, I was looking forward to. Like, how much did they, like, uh, during the Limitless Fortress, did they, how much did they explore, like, life in the Limitless Fortress for, um, like, for, like, the okay. normal, like, tellings? Not necessarily, like, the backstory for, like, some of the characters. No, quite a bit more. Um, We get an explanation to the different levels of the Infinite Fortress because there's essentially three levels and living areas. Okay. Uh, and and it does explain them more. I think actually just in the next couple of episodes, I probably would have managed to squeeze the uh, explanation in if I'd up to the ante to 17. But since we had two slightly longer submissions and Nick Knack and I had quite a few essays due and other things, we ended up going with slightly shorter submissions. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, I wouldn't have yes. finished this if we had a the original submission plan. <laughs> yeah. But there, there's definitely at least, I think... 
directly after 14, maybe 15, 16, or 17, one of them is an exposition that talks about the levels of the infinite fortress. Uh -huh. uh, because there are different levels inside of it that are very different in terms of how you live and where you live. Yeah, because what I was going to say was I would like just to see like a spinoff of like some like person with living within the Limitless Fortress and like seeing like how like, the hierarchy works or whatever. Somebody completely unconnected to anyone from the main <laughs> series who's just like living while this shit yeah. is going like, down and only, having like, to deal the, with it. Right, like, like basically that and then like maybe the only like character that you see from the main series is like Makubex or something like that. Yeah, they're like, whoop, oh shit, there's another one of Makubex's wires. Better not go down that way this week. <laughs> yeah. Pretty, yeah, pretty much. That would be pretty funny. Yeah. I mean, that's all I really had for free thought. I mean, I just wanted to bring up it again because it's my favorite part. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, we're going to move into the closing thoughts here. Actually, wait. So. Uh, point should have been changed around. More backstory, more lore dump and our stuff should have happened by that's now. That's fair. That's fair. Yeah, all that's right. all I got. So just so he can get out of here, because I know he's on something of a time crunch right now. Lord Vorn, do you want to give your closing thoughts and uh, score? Uh, didn't like this. It, the worry of convolution is really, really getting me. And if this wasn't in the hat, I probably wouldn't have fully watched all the episodes. I probably would have just given up after 10. So uh, I kind of don't want to rate this, but I know if I don't, you guys will declare this the best show fucking ever. I mean, you don't, so... have, to, you don't have to rate it. I mean, you, we know your you... opinion on it, and I haven't rated a bunch of the shows in the past. Yeah, but it's my thing to rate. So uh, <sighs> definitely wouldn't recommend this to anyone. So uh I don't want to give it a 5 out of 10, but I know it's not bad enough for me to give it a 110. It's definitely not in the middle, so 4 out of 10. All right. But it definitely needs a lot of work. So, yeah. All right. Nick, Nick, do you want to go now? Yeah. Let's end positively here. Um, I... I find it really hard to care about this show much at all. I think going back to these episodes day by day was difficult because I was kind of bored out of my mind for the most part. Um, much uh, acknowledge this is a bad show though. Much of this, like many of the problems are fairly like subjective and it's hard for me to really vocalize specifically what I find wrong with there are aspects I can but there are about a billion other things I could have said that are all like very like even more subjective that I can't necessarily well I can say them but they're just not it's not going to come out right I'm not going to give it a low score because I don't hate it but it's not getting a higher score I'd give it a six out of ten all right I'll go next. I'll let Seki in the review since this was her show. Um, I really enjoyed the show. I liked the characters. I liked how it was developed. And while it was like slow in some places, I definitely still, still think it was a great show. And I think I would recommend someone to watch this or read the manga. Um, but obviously it's not for everyone as uh, Nick Nack and Vorn have showed. So not everyone will like it. It's very subjective but I thoroughly enjoyed it. I like the characters and I like the world building. So I give it a nine out of 10. So for me, um, I think one of the major reasons why I love it so much is it's very out of my normal genre because it is dystopian and it's a little bit more um, of that kind of thing. It's not something I would normally watch, but I found it and I ended up loving it. And I love the world building like Realm does, uh, specifically with the fortress and everything that it entails. Um, and I mean, I was a lot younger when I watched it. And like I said, I watched the dub. So like, you know, I liked it when it was worse than it is as in the sub. So <laughs> there is that. I mean, I see a lot of redeeming qualities in it. But I also know that it, it was uh, one of the Tokyo Pop English publications, which is why it never got uh, renewed for any more anime, because Tokyo Pop went belly up 
um, in the early 2000s uh, significantly, and they actually lost a lot of their uh, publishing rights at the time. Um, and so a lot of shows got dropped at the wayside when that happened. Um, but I give it, you know, a limitless fortress out of 10, you know? Hey. <laughs> All right, then. Um, with Lord Warren gone and us finishing up the show here, just we're going to reiterate with the, because we announced last episode what the next episodes are going to be, but um, mm-hmm. Demon Slayer 1 through 13 and what was it? Prince of Tennis 1 through 15? Yes. Right? Yes, yes. I got that. So, yeah. Um, yeah. I, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm a bit out of energy here. I'll try harder, everyone. <laughs> yeah, try, try harder, harder than uh, Nick Knack did just then, everyone. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. You're all good, Nick No, no, no. Definitely try harder than really, really <laughs> done trying. <laughs>